There's been some changes. We got a new number one. Hey, everyone. Hey, welcome. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Oh, my gosh, guys. Let me say the intro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone. Welcome to the Clydesdale After Dark, the quarterfinal wrap-up edition. We're so glad you could join us. I'm here with my friends, Amy and Charlie, and my really good new friends, Dex and Cheryl. And we're going to break down the workouts from the weekend and kind of look at the leaderboard as it goes live and kind of walk through that. But first of all, Cheryl and Dex, you competed this weekend. What were those workouts like? Dex, you want to go first? Yeah, I'll go. Uh, sure. it, I, we got what we were looking for. I think um, being able to pick the flow of having all five of them at once and kind of pick and choosing your shots was good. Um, to me, I think in retrospect, I would have done the wall ball one last and kind of save some juice for the snatch one. But yeah, it was great, man. I think uh, my only kind of honorable mentions were the front squad. I hit 375 and the wall ball workout, I hit 911, which was cool for me. I probably should have picked it up a little sooner. And I think I could have got under nine, but it uh, overall, man, I got, I got what I, uh, what I bought with the training leading up, I felt pretty good about it um, and come out unscathed. I did, uh, did not try to super sprint the GHD one just cause you know, I know the body of work leading up and I was not willing to pay those taxes. So I feel good. It was a good time. I mean, I think ahead of time I said, I liked the anatomy of it and you know, the taxes you were going to pay leading into the heavy load things. And, and that's exactly what it was. So it was a big test of you being able to coordinate those things under kind of some pre fatigue from the, the days that led up. So I enjoyed it. I thought, I thought it was a great test, you know, across the board. And Cheryl? Yeah, I agree. Um, I think that it was really cool that we got the workouts all at once. And I think that people, if they were smart, like people in like California that got them at 12 p.m., likely I probably would have went front squat, snatch, and box jump over, then started the rest of the workouts because that workout likely wouldn't have taxed as much or affected as much of the other stuff, whereas the other stuff really did affect that one. And I, and I saw that firsthand today you know, watching the group of guys going. So um, I do think that it, they were all really good tests. I think that they're really well balanced. I personally think that there should have been one more test. I think that there should have been a sixth event that was a little bit more, uh, a little bit more higher skill. I think that the snatch box jump couplet was really, really good. It tested that like power, but I think that they needed something similar on the gymnastics aspect of things that tested you know, something more of like a, a ring muscle up handstand walk or something along those lines to kind of like, it would have just been a really good compliment to that final day is my only thoughts. And I was like, is it because of the spacing? Well, we needed 30 feet. And at the end of the day, if that was really the, the, the make or break is a spacing, I think that that's not even really a good call because they were requiring a rope and a GHG. And a lot of people that have a rope and a GHG likely have at least 30 feet of space. So, yeah. Nice. yeah. So that was my well, thought. Well, we actually have um, an updated men's leaderboard. Oh, let's go. Hey, yeah. So, so the top five um, in North America are Travis Mayer, number one. Ooh. Charlie, Charlie and I's boy held on uh, for the number <laughs> one spot. And uh, Scott Pancheck, number two. Jeffrey Adler, number three. Pat Vellner, number four. And Alexandra Carone, number five. Other notables, Medeiros was six, Saxon Pancheck eight, Noah Olson nine, Spencer Pancheck 11, three Pancheks in the top 11, Chandler 13th. That's right. Uh, Sam Cornier 15th, Ben Smith 18th, Sam Quant 19th, Cole Sager 20th. Oh, uh, there's a shift on the women's too. Oh. Yeah, there yeah. is. Amanda Barnhart, yeah. number one. I don't know. Wow. Oh, there we go. Bro, there's no way she did not just smoke house the last one. Oh, like, she, yeah. she took she did it in 228. Wow. Jam, 228. Got, like, so I don't have that one school. yet. I see yeah. that one. It's Amanda, then Danny Spiegel, Mal O'Brien in third, and Brooke Let's Wells and go. Emma Carey tied for four. Fee Sagafi after that. Fee Sagafi. Mm. Okay. Yeah. She's a sleeper, big sleeper. Yeah. Let's see what spend, spending that time with Papa Rich did for you. She also mm -hmm. trained to the Panchik brothers, doesn't she? Yeah. Yep. Dude, so. Tola, Tola did the fifth test in 148, and that was what? the first place. I, look, I told you. I, I, I bet he muscle snatched them all. 
our other uh, teen, Annika Greer, came in 26 above number 27, Carrie Pierce. Yeah. Wow. Carrie dropped. She was number one after day one. Where's yeah. Tia? Test test number. That's a different. This is North America. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Test number three, she took 133rd, and then it was test number four that where she took 307th place. I got to tell you, the strength uh, of the competitors is for a 231-pound front squat for four to be a 300th place finish for a right. <laughs> oh, my heart. I mean, I, uh, yeah, I personally tasted that. I said, because I surprised myself. I had done the... Um, what did I do the first day? I think I did event one, fine. And then I was going to front squat that night, but I didn't. I came back and did the front squat at 6 a.m. with Marilyn. But super surprised because I've not front squatted for load in just forever. It's been like three and a jerk just to, you know, keep the stroke. And I hit 375, and I was like, all right, that's going to be a – I'll be a top 30, 20. No. <laughs> Some people – there was plenty of people hitting 400 plus and just – we are really playing a different ball game now as far as like what people are able to do for reps and stuff. And I, I think I watched as many videos as people were posting, which we talked about them putting up videos and keeping with that trend. And it, it was true, man. People were posting all the videos after they would release the scores and uh, the way CrossFit handled it was putting everybody doing the kind of the dream matchups is what they were calling it. That was pretty cool for them. So yeah, man, it, it is, it is a different ball game right now. Good Lord. I think that this is a really cool thing that I wanted to talk to, to, to you guys about too is, there is such a difference between between being fit and capable and being competitive. So like that that strict handstand push up workout, I like smoked the people at the gym on that. Like I did it all unbroken, very minimal transitions. And I'm like, how was I a minute slower than anybody? I didn't put anything down. I didn't stop anywhere. And then you just watch that the girls that are doing it in that atmosphere where they have all of them, they're literally like, they're, they're, they're just so like, there's like, no, there's no slow movement. It's not like everything is like as fast as possible. Like there is no mess ups at all. So, and it's just crazy. Like the, the difference, you know, even that the wall ball workout, I did the wall balls unbroken. I was pulling between, uh, my lowest was just, just under a thousand, but if it even got under a thousand, it was like, pull it up again. Come so on, was, Sherry, you pulled a thousand the whole time? I was pulling between like 1050 and 1150. Yeah, and I still on. was a 1044 with unbroken wall balls. So these girls are pulling 12, 13, 1400 calorie per hour on that yeah. rower. You know, I'll tell you, like the, the thing I saw, we, you know, we went and visited James Townsend and Mal at their home gym. And, you know, I'm a big low damper guy. Like, get the tempo up. I roll on a four, and I'm, I'm 225. This little girl cranks it up to eight or ten. And we started workouts, me, her, Marquand Jones. Workout starts with 60-calorie rows. I got off two calories ahead of her yeah. and, like, hammered it. And she is not a bit – I mean, I want to say she's your size, Cheryl, with a little more muscle mass. But, yeah, it's, it's wild to me because I, I said the same thing, Cheryl. I put down – Smoke the strict handstand push ups. You know, you can only do, I thought, could only do dumbbell <laughs> queen. This is so fast. <laughs> yeah. I said, well, you can only do dumbbell queen so fast. Cool. I'm pulling them down. I said, so, it, and like we said, it was an execution workout. I, I kicked double unders one time, the middle of the second part of the workout in that round two at like 42. And then, you know, thought it was pretty good, like 9 11, something like that. People put down like sub sevens and a 740 something, like, Crazy. I did. I didn't know where you got that from. Like, did you like backhand spring off the wall into the dumbbells? And <laughs> I know. I was yeah. like, did they forget to count the rest? <laughs> That's what I was yeah. saying. I was oh, like, I thought, they... <laughs> yeah. Even the even the row. I thought. Um. You know. And I had talked to Chandler about it. About you know how to strategize. I was like, man, you got to think the last thirty wall balls of Karen are horrible, and it's right on the line. You're gonna feel fine. You get to eighty, you'll know. You'll run through 120. I said, just get on the rower fast and get it going to whatever your bottom line thing is. I feel like everybody has a gate, right? Like Cheryl said, she had a, a pace she didn't want to get under, and she had one that she wanted to stick to. You probably had one like that might have been too fast too soon. Last 20 calories. Yeah. Send it home. Right. And so, I see, I should have cut it on for like the last 35 or 40 because I, I was 1,300 cruising the whole time. I did the wall balls unbroken, jumped on the rower, and just and was cruising. I was yeah, like, man, I after, did- after – 
Yeah. Didn't strap my feet in or anything. I'm like, just freaking go. Like I didn't yeah. take any time, you know, yeah, it's wild, man. It's wild. And honestly, I didn't realize they were taking so few from every other continent. And, you know, oh, looking yeah. at the, looking at the scores from North America, it is a dog fight, uh, especially for the men and then, and women too. And I feel like the, the gap for other continents is, is you know, yeah. I, hate to, I hate to say it's a big gap, but it is. I mean, you can see the, the numbers. Uh, so yeah, it, it was interesting, man. A lot of the stuff I thought was just execution and, you know, but to burn for 120 calories, I saw guys rolling 1500, 1600 the whole time. And then having that gear for the last 20, 30, that is, that is wild. Crazy. Yeah. That's wild. The, uh, yeah. I was going to ask, how did your guys' shoulders feel after that, uh, test number one? Fine. Okay. It, it was, it was, it was, yeah, the, the pairing I thought was great. If, yeah. if strict handstand push-ups weren't your bag, it was a muscle management thing on the front end, right? Because um, you can breathe really well through the clean. Double unders are double unders. You know how you breathe through those. And 50 is kind of yeah. it's okay number, you know, if you if you made it to that level. The second right. part the second part was way more heartbeaty just because you can rep shoulder overhead so much faster. Yeah. So it was kind of like a how sharp is your movement, what's your rep mm -hmm. speed, and then, you know, like Cheryl said, transitions. But, I mean – you can, I, didn't, I don't know where you where I bled time. I mean, I, I think I took one, yeah. one long transition that was like three, four seconds. And I mean, it yep. was one step, one step, tap, one yeah. step. And man, it was uh, it was impressive because we have some teams, people, uh, Jack Hoffmister and Gabby Hayes, that were at the ranch last year and, and both did top half finishes um, in house with us. And it was just, yeah, it's it's weird, man. It's weird to see where people bleed time on those. It's uh, something I really I focused on in the second part was you know, doing that my handstand pushups are like this. Mm -hmm. I did, I really tried to focus on really keeping more tricep for like this way. And it was, so that like didn't fatigue me because I had done the US trials where we had to do that horrible macho man workout where it was like the, the power clean push press jerk and the handstand yeah. pushups. And I just died on handstand pushups. And I never, I'm like really good at handstand pushups. So I was like, I remembered that. I'm like, oh, don't do that again. Like, let's do this differently. Um, but yeah, like I didn't, I felt great. Like, you know, so the, uh, the GHG rope climb uh, pistol one, man, let me just tell you, I am a two and a half pull girl to the top of the rope. I had no midline. Like yeah. it was like, it was inchworm, inchworm up, inchworm up. Cause I, and once again, no breaks, all unbroken, but it was like, it was a slug fest trying it took me like four pulls every time to get up the rope. So, and I don't that know. One, how that I feel. one to me was good. Yeah. yeah. It was a good workout. I don't know how I feel about that one in terms of standards though. And I'm going to be honest because you know, a 15 foot, how are we measuring 15 feet? Are people, I mean, there, nobody's showing their distance from the, you know, like I'm not trying to be like, there's going to be cheaters out there, but there is going to be probably. There always is. I, yeah. look, I, I know. I, there, there definitely is. I think all the videos of like friends in the space have sent me to like, Hey, you know, watch this, whatever, just for, you know, whatever, get my opinion or to, you know, show yeah. off. Um, I, I saw people, you know, put the tape at the top and drop it. Uh, I think a lot of people have that rogue 15 foot upright. And a lot of people had like, like I know James Towns's gym has like 25 foot ceiling. I mean, he can get silly with that, yeah. but yeah. the that one to me, man, I, I know, and like the funny story is, so I, I didn't go too terribly fast. I went to 50 without stopping on the GHD and just to collect myself, took a big breath, went and did the last 10. I went to jump up and do the first rope climb, like stepped right to it. And I did like a Mufasa and whiff. It looked like I just jumped in air because I was seeing like three ropes. And so I landed on my feet. I was like, oh, that's what we're doing. It was like headache and disorientation management. Um, but that one, yeah, that was uh, the lead into that one, man. The GHDs into that made that tuck really hard. And I mean, I'm, I'm tall, so I could do two pulls without jumping, but so baby jump for me was cool, but getting to the pistols, the balance was hard for me. Cause I was still so disoriented from doing GHDs and you know, you want to open your eyes, shut your eyes, do whatever it is you do. And so I was battling the headache and the, and the, the disorientation of it the whole time. And, you know, pistols aren't my bag anyway. I'm just, I was not about to sell my, my kneecaps for, uh, six more spots on the leaderboard. So, uh, but I'm paying the taxes, but I'll tell you what, that I felt it in those snatches today. Cause I, I just finished that one an hour ago and then I finished two pizzas right after, but my <laughs> man, bracing and breathing was, uh, was not a fun time for that one for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That was a fun one. So how did you <laughs> like that one? 
I love. I, well, I, t- I told uh, Scott and him before you got on. I got what I was looking for. I uh, I lit the fuse for nine and got back for six. And I was like, we have made a mistake, but we're in too deep. So yeah. I went. I did the nine touch and go, and then sent it. I may or may not have taken a breath. Uh, I was just excited to get it over with. And thirty inch burpee box jumps is something we put in our kind of. We do like cardio parties on Sundays, and it's usually one of the minutes or one of the every two minute things. Just you know, I like the athleticism of it. it makes you feel cool, and you can't do it too terribly fast. So that's a good excuse. And so I went back to the bar, did three of the six, dropped it. And I said, oh, we have messed up. And then I, I looked up. I was like, all right, we're already past where we wanted to be. So, you know, finished it out. It wasn't too bad. Um, and then Marilyn did it. She finished right at the time cap. So that was cool. Uh, I thought that was – because honestly, if you asked me before, I was like, all right, I'm getting definitely getting under three. I got 320, and which was which was cool. I, uh, you know, I know what I bought with the training leading in. So – it was cool. I did uh, just not poor planning. I knew what I was doing. If I could have held on, I'd have held on. And if not, which was what happened. So yeah. it was a good time. I thought the test was really good watching people like, uh, I mean, I, my man, Christian Harris, that, that's one for him. And I want to say on the three, he squat snatched one, um, which is very cool because going from power to squat in a set has not been a thing. He's acquired that skill. So shout out my man for, for pushing the needle. But um, And he is doing great. So he's, he's going to be in the 120 and go and get to pick one um format wise have you guys seen if they are gonna because i've heard i've heard mixed stories are they gonna slot them to a semi on their own or are they gonna allow athletes to pick because i thought that was the gamesmanship of it was it was like hey you won pick where you want to go number two pick where you want to go so you could get maybe it's supposed to be a combination of both wow so they're gonna screw people for storylines and let some people pick that's what that means exactly i have a feeling yeah i think I think they're going to probably, wow. what I'm, my, thought, my thoughts are, they're likely going to section people into places and then maybe be like, oh, like maybe you can choose to go somewhere else. I don't know. But yeah, the rules change as they go. I know that for sure. But well, and I, I feel do. like it's kind of like 2011 all over again, where it's like, they're figuring it out. Yeah. Something new, we're figuring things out as we go. And I do think that this format is really cool. Like I said, I think all of these tests were great. I do wish yeah. I had been able to do the last workout and it was really hard for me not to do it. And, you know, like I'm happy that I didn't do it, but I'll, I'll do it in a couple of weeks when I'm feeling good, <laughs> you know, just because, cause I, I do, I think all the tests were amazing. I think they were all good. Like I said, I just wish that there was like one more that that would have made it. Then again, I don't know what people's cores were like, because my shoulders, I know you asked about shoulders. My shoulders are fine. And I'm going to be honest, that's why I was going to do it today because this is the best my shoulders felt in like a month and a half. Yeah. But the second I went to catch a snatch in the bottom, I was like, not worth it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I agree. The format to me is, is very cool. You know, I mean, even in the gym I'm at, people were fired up to come do it. We had, uh, you know, me, uh, the two kids that went to the games last year, um, Marilyn made it. And there were two ladies, you know, who go to class every day, which was awesome. And everybody's fired up and, you know, they're getting in the mix of it. And they, they did great. Um, I think, you know, and I love, I'm a big muscle up handstand walk guy, Cheryl. I'm, I am a huge fan of the sexy things, but I think like, as far as, you know, making it gymnasty and testing your efficiency under fatigue and, and the movement quality. And then at the highest level, it's craftiness, right? Like your rep speed, your transitions, all that stuff. I thought the first one did that without, without making anybody stare at the rings or, yeah, sure. you know, do That's the wheelbarrow good. kick up, which I hate. I, I agree. I would have loved for it to be, hey, here's 300-foot handstand walk, uh, 30 ring muscle-ups, do it however you want it or something like that. But I think as far as um, – without, you know, throw the schedule out because the schedule is not very inclusive. It's like, hey, got to be in by 2 o'clock. I know you work 9 to 5, but uh, figure it out. Give us your 50 bucks. Yeah. But other than that, man, I, I really – because there's a, there's a girl who qualified at our gym that is a strict test and push-ups aren't a thing for her. But, you know, the buy-in's 30. I think she did more in that that time cap than she had ever done leading up. So, that you know, it's just like people PR and they're snatching a workout, just, you know, making that sexy is cool to me. And then I think it makes the conversation easier going forward for their coaches. Like, hey, you know, here's how we're going to scale these strict things. Here's how we're going to build this capacity and go up. Because she could bang out, keep a handstand push-ups. But, you know, to buy the sexy stuff in that one, you had to have the prereqs. And yep. so – yeah. I'm cool with that. You know, coach hat on, athlete hat off, which I, you know, athlete in me wants muscle ups. That's always been a, a good thing for me in the open or whatever. But, you know, I, I can get down with, I, I see that's, that's the, the workout they put that on. 
And um, yeah. and I, but I don't know why they put that in the the, the equipment list if they weren't going to use it as far as like the thirty feet. Because I was like, man, five more feet is going to get ugly for anything. Right. You know. So yeah, it's I, I dug it, man. I you know we talked about kind of I was iffy about the GHD thing. And I think the people that you know I saw some man Brent Pakowski watching him do one through five, you know front squat throw out. But watching that cat skate through, and it was, you could tell how methodical it was, and things like that were very impressive to me. Uh, Chandler sent me his snatch video. I almost threw up watching it. It was so disgusting and fast. Um, which is, you know, good lord, it was. And then oh, not because of his stuff, form. Man. It was because of his speed. Form, yeah, yeah. It was. <laughs> he texted me. He was like two oh four or whatever he got, something like that. I was like, ah, uh, what? And then he sent me the video. I was like, that's every bit of two oh four. Okay, that was. Uh, <laughs> And they, you know, I think that's the thing where you, and you get to see the separation of like the, you know, deliberately making the reps count and then the marriage of speed and technique and, you know, being within the standard. And that's yeah. why I was so glad everybody posted their videos. And if you wanted to qualify, you had to post every video because I don't know, you know, you guys have social media. If I see any stories or anything of you doing suspect reps immediately from now on, you have to show me everything. Prove it to me. I, I don't, I'm like Ron Burgundy. We're live. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Yeah. You know so what I do I want to run down. Yeah. I want to run down a couple of the other leaderboards, at least Europe yeah. and, and Oceania. Um, and if for the men in Europe, the f- first place winner was Reggie Fossa. Ooh. Number two was Simon Mantilla. Three was uh, Giorgos Carva- Caravas. Four was- Scott, pra- Scott practiced these before. <laughs> Yeah, and five was uh, BKG. It was also an impressive mover. Uh, watching mm-hmm. him and Annie and Frederick's videos, which Annie Thor started doing any of these, she had she like the di- yeah. Bro, she had the diastasis tape for her belly, and she was, yeah, she crushed that GHD workout. She was like, "I hope it's a good time, lady. You know, that's a good time." <laughs> and well, she, on- uh, yeah, very impressed by that. Oh, then on the women's side, Laura Horvath wins. Oh my god. That Gabri- was impressive. Gabriella yeah. Magala, second. I kind of called that earlier, but anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kristen Holta, uh, Jackie Dolstrom, Emma McQuaid, top five. Emma McQuaid, always Amy the Thor nine, coming off pregnancy. Also Crazy. having like a 10-pound baby also. Let us not forget that. And Samantha Briggs, number 12. Still in there. Yeah, yeah bro. She's... Look, they're gonna have to like tell her she can't compete anymore. She'll she'll do it till the wheels fall off. Uh, Kat, Katrin was eleven, just for that. And then let's go to Oceana for. Wait, Katrin lives in Boston, but it's competing out of that. It's where you're you're born. You're where your citizenship is. Yeah, just like Tia. It ought to be where you pay your bills. So in Oceana for the women, uh, Tia is first. Kara second. Shockers both of those and then laura clifton third ellie turner fourth christy bishop fifth maddie sturt was six ah because she's she's been she's been up there consistently from from that uh that area for a while now i think the last few years yeah that's good and then the men jay crouch wins con porter second baden brown third rob forte holy smoly Uh, fourth There's a master's guy now, too. He's taking my spot. Yeah. Luke Fiso is fifth. And then Brandon Swan, who I thought was concentrating on Olympic lifting, was sixth. (laughs) What about, uh, yeah. No, Newberry? No, he's not. No, he's not. Yeah. James. Where's James? Newberry. He's he's somewhere close. He's not not far down. Yeah. And and knowing he he just got his knee scoped, I watched all his videos. I mean, he's, yeah, that was impressive, man. Yeah, Roy Stun was ninth. Uh, Zeke Grove eleventh. Roy Stun front squatted four seventeen for four. What was it that uh, Sam Dancer did? Four fifty five or four fifty. Good lord! Just, just and because I, I watched his video on the snatch workout, <laughs> it looked like my Randy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I can't believe he wore shoes. Honestly, I've seen him. I've seen him snatch three hundred barefooted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he he is a bear of a man. And he's the sweetest man, but he's a he bear is. of a man. Um, yeah, he he's wild, man. And he just tore – I mean, he tore his peck. I think he had a few that kept him down, so he needed – I think he put a 204 on that. So – and I don't, I don't know where he ended up, but uh, 
I think he was close. I think he's 140-something maybe. You know where he was, Sam? Where's Sam? My an- my analyst here is, uh, is really <laughs> – You know, I'll say this, guys. I know we're going through leaderboard stuff, but just for all of you guys out there that, you know, maybe be listening or even you guys on here, what I really loved about this season is that these are called tests. And for me, even as like an athlete who's competing, but even the people that did go into this as like, hey, this is my first time. There was a girl at the gym. This is her first time. Is It's so cool as an assessment on like, okay, where do I need to bring up my weaknesses from like where do I really excel at and like you know using that almost as a gauge and a marker not as yourself as a self-worth type of a thing but as like hey like it gives you a plan for your off season like where do you want to work the next you know four six eight twelve weeks to bring some things up you know like where should you be putting your focus in and I think that these tests are so cool for you to see uh those things and so that's why I I really liked that they kind of had changed the name to more of like a test I think it was more into in line with what I think people should be getting out of this stage of the open. Or the- Absolutely. I agree with that hundred percent. I, I noticed that too. And I mean, I think it, it's going to differentiate it from people too. I mean, I think, you know, every, every program coach person that writes program puts it out. Hey, there's a difference in training and test. And now that's, you know, the language that HQ uses. So that was pretty cool. I noticed that too. I agree with that. One more funny thing I just saw as I was looking, trying to find Sam dancer. Um, 164, 164. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we, um, we had Paul Tremblay on a couple of weeks ago and, you know, he's kind of retired from the sport. 79th. Oh man, look, Paul is built for it and he is strong, strong at baseline. I want to say the last sanctional we did, we beat Paul, but they, um, and they canceled it on us, but no, Paul is, uh, Paul is good, man. And he's, and he's built for it. And he's yeah. probably got to, he's probably got to dip in the whole time. We asked him if he was gonna if he was gonna compete if he made it, and his wife said he better. Oh, that's awesome. That sounds like her. She told me she told me this morning she was like, "You're probably gonna you think you can move up?" I was like, "No, no, I can't. No, I'm not." Well, that's been cool because I mean, here like you know, some people got sparked up about it, and now they you think we could do a team next year? I'm like, man, we can all we can do Friday, Saturday, Sunday team stuff. I'll I'll do it with you. We'll see what's up. Uh, I speak a very hard truth language, so I will be very honest with you about where we're at and if we can be competitive. Uh, but yeah, I'm, it'll be fun. We're uh, we're gonna train and stuff, and it's uh, it'll be a good time. Well, I don't want to keep you all too long. You know, it's Sunday afternoon, and um, you guys are are whooped from the weekend, I'm sure. Um, but I, I want to thank you both for coming on and and doing all this and kind of telling us how it felt. Um, I thought your analysis going in was pretty spot on. Do you think there's anything you missed in the analysis up front that caught you by surprise in the workout? Um, I, man, I, not really. I think the order, when we, we talked about the order, we both agreed that, you know, getting all five at once, you were able to pick. I think that was crucial because I saw, I saw some people that I know for a fact are in, like, head and shoulders stronger than what they put on the front squat workout, but maybe they had a, a rough pick of the order. And I saw people, you know, Chandler's at a camp where they have people helping organize their their order, right? And so I think we were spot on with that. I think, you know, obviously some, some speed differences, which I think comes with the game every year. It changes so much. And I think a lot of people don't know what to expect going into higher level competitions this year because, you know, most people had to stay at home. And if you didn't have access to X, Y, Z, you know, you would think, hey, these things may be down. No, there people are insanely strong and fit right now, and it didn't matter. So I think that just verifies to people that the cream rises and, you know, the fittest are going to be the fittest no matter the situation or the seasonal life we're going through. And I think that's pretty cool to see. And I, I think we, you know, I think we're, I think we're on top of it, especially the way I feel now. It's nothing a little pizza and, and uh, dessert didn't fix. So um, <laughs> I felt pretty good about it. And uh, I really appreciate you guys having us on and, um, you know, look forward to hanging out with y'all some more. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk in May when they announce the Masters um, tests. So you That's can I said. give yeah. give me yeah. some uh, tips for that. For sure, yeah. and I totally agree with you, Dex. I think that this was all good. And even as I was saying, you know, talking about the muscle up thing, it's like at the end of the day, like you said, the cream rises on top. The, the people that need to be in the games are making it to the next stage. So I think that it was really good. I think that we also did a pretty good job of covering things. So yeah, I I had so much fun with this. I hope we get to do it some more often. So actually we could do the teams too. You never know. Well, you show yeah. up I'm going to do it. We're yeah. going to, uh, me and the kids here are going to do, already, already text on and say, hey, do you guys want to take a shot at those quarterfinals? We'll do it. 
And um, because I have a, a worm and a two person worm and a four person worm, so why not? Um, so we'll do some of them, and, and then uh, I'd love to to go back and forth with you and see what you guys are thinking. So especially aiming for the the master stuff. Um, my man Eddie Simpson, you guys don't know him, but is a master's athlete I'd coached for a while, and he finally made the games in 2018. Um, so I'm, you know, I always keep an eye on that, but I'll be excited to see what they release and how similar those workouts are going to be yeah. versus versus the individual stuff. You know, I, I doubt they'll be the same. I saw the equipment list was similar, except, you know, times two GHD, times two blah, blah, blah for team. Um, so I'm, I'm super interested to see how, how much different the team and Masters is going to be, which traditionally I've liked those workouts better than the open and sometimes the regional. So I'll be yeah. anxious uh, to see what well, those are. Well, let's book it. We'll have you back on to preview the teams and wrap up the teams. And we'll do the same thing for the masters um, and just keep this thing rolling. Oh yeah. And then we'll go right into the games. Yeah. Oh yeah. Semifinals too. So all of of the above. Yeah. So thank you guys both. Um, You guys were awesome. I loved your analysis. I thought it was as complete any, as anybody in the business. Um, Love you guys, and we'll see you at the next event, the team series. Yep. Sounds Love good. you guys, man. Thank you. All right. Bye. Have a good Sunday. Bye, guys. Bye. Guys, you too. Bye.